One of California's major health insurers is shaking up its pharmacy networks, going with a pair of industry disruptors. And Bertha Coombs joins us now with the CNBC exclusive. Hey, Bertha. Hey, Joe. So Blue Shield of California is looking to make drugs more affordable for its 4.8 million members, signing with Mark Cuban's Cost Plugs drug company, the 20-month-old online pharmacy, which sells drugs at 15% over wholesale, and Amazon Pharmacy, which just this week launched $35 insulin. Blood Blue Shield uh, CEO Paul Markovich says the transition will start in 2025. I expect we're going to, when this ramps up completely, we're going to be saving $500 million a year. And I think if you apply that, we spend more than $600 billion a year as a country on drugs. So if this were to be applied across the country, the savings could reach easily $100 billion. This is just the second health insurer to sign with Class Plus. I asked Mark Cuban how hard it has been to win them over, and he told me there are a lot of bad habits they need to break, but payers now realize that Class Plus has made the price of medications transparent, with doctors and patients seeing what prices should be, and the industry will have to adjust. Still, in addition to Cost Plus and Amazon Blue, Blue Shield, or rather Blue Shield will continue to use CVS for specialty drugs, because that's an area where you still need to have that scale. Right. How big a deal is Mark Cuban's business becoming? He says that they're growing at about 20% a month, but this okay. is a tough business to disrupt because you've got the big players yep. and they have the scale and they can get... Do they see the him business. now, though, as a, as a unique and genuine competitor, or do they think this is some kind of sideshow. I, I think they don't yet. He's not as big a threat yet. But you also have these insurers that are still on their contracts. So right. maybe as their contracts come Roll due. Over. Right. And likely the blues and the smaller players might turn to them. Certainly, you know, CVS Health isn't going to because right. they have a That's pharmacy their benefit business. management. Yep. That's their business. United Healthcare isn't going to, and neither is Cigna, which owns Express Scripts. Right. So he says, you know, obviously he's never going to get the big three, but he does say that, you know, we're talking with all of them. You know, but, but if you try to go to a pharmacy, it's crowded a lot of times. It is. It takes it is. time, a lot some time. People like to talk to their pharmacist well, it, about their prescription. Well, it's not just talk, but sometimes... That was the, the question. You, didn't you write that I know. question? Yeah. <laughs> People do like to talk to the pharmacist, but, uh, you know, for the pharmacist, they have to often call and get, you know, reauthorization. Can't, can't, oh, you can't so talk it takes to a, a human. Yeah. No, it takes they, a while. Yeah. So one of the things, Amazon has that ability online to be able to talk to people, but they also have the ability for you to pick up your script, your prescription at a physical pharmacy, oh, okay. as does Cuban. They, they've actually partnered with a few individual pharmacies that are trying to grow that network. So you could still go in and see a pharmacist. But, you know, when you're with complex things, you know, my, my late mom had a lot of issues in terms of hypertension, COPD. It was really helpful to be able to talk to the pharmacist when she had all these different drugs that might interact. So just so I'm understanding this, basically the existing system controls 80% of the pharmacy locations through, and, and cost plus and some of these others, you have to basically do mail order. And, and exactly. so, the, but, but are, is he right that those middle market players are driving, like if we all just did the, the cost plus model, would we even need Medicare drug re negotiations and all that? Like how much of the high cost of prescription drugs is because of this yeah. old system? And what would the people behind the old that system is, say about why we need that? That is the huge point of contention in the business now, Kelly. You know, you've got people in Washington, actually, there are a number of bills, whether they'll ever make it to the floor for a vote is another question, but a number of bills bipartisan trying to get at the middlemen, the pharmacy benefit managers, because the drug payers say, well, we have to raise our prices because we're going to get such big discounts from the PBMs, so they're the problem. And, of course, the pharmacy benefit managers and everybody else points to the drug makers raising their prices, you know, twice a Why year. Why do we need the PBMs? Why can't it all just be direct? Because the scale of it, you need to have people negotiating and being able to basically you know, do the logistics on it. But there are a lot of questions about whether or not that model is going to continue. They argue that they provide a service in that they will get a big discount from a drug maker. For example, right now with the GLP ones. The right? weight loss drugs, yeah. The weight loss drugs. As you look forward to next year and you get Lilly's coming online, they might be able to play off Lilly's drug against, you know, Novo Nordic's drugs and maybe get a discount, making them preferred in the formulary. Interesting. And then that discount, they say, 
it helps to smooth out the the premiums for everyone, depending on how an employer wants to. That's why it. I love competition. Let's see. I don't know. That's that's their argument, but yeah. this is a huge area of contention right now, and one that's getting a lot of scrutiny from regulators, from lawmakers, and from businesses as well. Fascinating.